Let's take a look at the second type. We're going to have a parabola with two zeros in this case. So if this is my original function, then my reciprocal function is going to be y is equal to 1 over x squared minus 4. The non-permissible values, well, I could also write this as 1 over x plus 2, x minus 2 if I factor it down, which is going to help me state my non-permissible values of x cannot equal positive 2 or negative 2. The invariant points I can solve algebraically again stating that, well, if it's when y is equal to 1, then 1 is going to equal x squared minus 4 from my original function because it's invariant, which means that when I add 4 to both sides, 5 is equal to x squared, or the positive or negative square root of 5 is equal to x. This is going to give me the invariant points of positive root 5 and 1 and negative root 5 and 1. I can also do it for if y is equal to negative 1. Then 3 is going to equal x squared or positive or negative root 3 is going to equal x. So then I actually have two more invariant points. I'm going to have the invariant points of root 3 and negative 1 and negative root 3 and negative 1. I have my asymptotes. And those are going to be from my non-permissible values up here. It's going to be when x is equal to negative 2, when x is equal to positive 2, or when y is equal to 0. And I'm going to go ahead and draw those in. I'm going to have 1 where x is equal to negative 2. I'm going to have 1 where x is equal to positive 2. And then I have the one where y is equal to 0. Now I'm going to fill in my chart. And I'm going to state for my chart that for the original function, if it was equal to negative 3, then y would be 5. Negative 2, y is 0. Negative 1.75. Well, I'm going to use the math frac button on my calculator for this to state it as a fraction of negative 15 over 16, because that's going to help me with the reciprocal. This would be negative 7 over 4, negative 39 over 16, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, negative 39 over 16, negative 7 over 4, negative 15 over 16, and 0. For my reciprocal function, I'm going to get positive 1 over 5, undefined, negative 16 over 15, negative 4 over 7, negative 16 over 39, negative 1 over 3, negative 1 over 4, negative 1 over 3, negative 16 over 39, negative 4 over 7, negative 16 over 15, and undefined. Now, one thing that might also help me with this one is I'm going to use my original function to help me see how this is going to look. So I know my original function is going to cross through these two x-intercepts. I can see that it hits the point of 0 and negative 4. 
negative 1 and negative 3, positive 1 and negative 3. And then I would also have negative 3 and 5, which means that I would have on this side positive 3 and 5. I'm just going to do this as a dotted line just so we can see what this one would have looked like. And then for my reciprocal function, well, I know it passes through the same points at y is equal to 1 or y is equal to negative 1, which are these radicals of root 5, negative root 5, root 3, and negative root 3. I'm going to have this top point here at the 0 and negative 1 fourth. And then from there, I can hit approximately where it's going to be. So it's going to be at one third, at one third. And it's going to stretch out and try and hug those asymptotes. Here I know this would be at one fifth. This would be at one fifth. And it's also going to try and connect to these asymptotes as well. So, because I have two non-permissible values, my domain is going to be represented by x, where x cannot equal negative 2, and x cannot equal positive 2 where x, e, r. For my range, I know that here it's going to try and hit the point of 0, but it's never going to hit that y equals 0. So it can be bigger than that y equals 0. It also is going to come below this negative 1 fourth, which means that there's going to be a gap in between here that it's pretty small, but it's a little hard to see. There's a gap in between the space here, between that negative one fourth and zero of obviously one fourth that it can't account for. So I'm not just going to do the y cannot equal. I'm going to say for my range, where it's represented by y, that y has to be less than or equal to, because it does actually hit that point of, negative one-fourth, or that y has to be greater than. It can't be equal to because it's never going to hit the point of zero, where y, e, r. All right, let's take a look at a case where it's a parabola with just one zero. So if I have a parabola with just one zero, well, here's an example of that. y is equal to bracket x minus 2 squared. The reciprocal of this is going to be y is equal to 1 over x minus 2 squared, which is already in its factored form. So that makes the MPVs easy. There's two of them that are the same, and it's just x cannot equal positive 2. I can solve for the invariant points, or I can fill in my chart first. Typically what I like to do is fill in my chart first, because sometimes that will just state what my invariant points are. So I'm going to stay here. It would be 0 and 4, 1 and 1, 1 1.5 and 1 over 4, 2 and 0, and then 1 over 4 again, 1 again, and 4 again. And on this side, I'm going to state that I have 1 over 4, 1, 4, undefined, 4, 1, and 1 over 4. 
Now, I see that I don't have the negative ones, but at the same rate, if I looked at my original function, my original function, because it just has one x-intercept, and it's right on the point of the vertex, it should never actually go into the negative range, which means my original function wouldn't have a negative one, so my new function should not either. And we can double check that. So right now we can see that we have the invariant points that are here and here. So, so far, we can see the invariant points of 1 and 1 and 3 and 1. I can graph out my original function using the points that I have here. And it's going to look something like this. I have that asymptote from my non-permissible value where x is equal to 2. And the horizontal one where y is equal to 0. And then I can build the points from there. So I'm going to state that I'm going to hit this point up here, this point up here. This is going to be at 1 fourth. This is going to be at 1 fourth. And then I'm going to fill it in. and see that my reciprocal function looks something like that. What's my domain? Well, my domain is represented by x, where x cannot equal 2 in x er. My range, which is represented by y, well, y is every value that's bigger than 0 in this case is going to try and approach 0 but never hit it, and it can never go into the negative, so I just say y is greater than zero, where y er.